Hello, bonjour, uh, and welcome on this video on LTI migration. So we're going to talk about uh, the migration from LTI 1.1 to LTI Advantage. Uh, mostly from a specification standpoint, we're not going to go into specific platforms implementation. So let's have a look. So the LTI uh, Advantage was built in a way to allow migration from LTI 1.1 to Advantage. So that means that uh, everything is changing on the wire, but the data is still there. And that really means that you can keep your courses. So the courses you've set up with the links, uh, with your gradebook set up and everything like that, when you move your tool from 1.1 to 1.3 implementation, then you should be able to keep all of that. At least the specification was not built in a way that would force you to change. So while the transport is different, the data is still around. And the question is going to be, how do I find back my data in an LTI Advantage payload compared to an LTI 1.1 payload? So where did it go? And that's what you're going to look at in the next few slides. So the launch you ahead in LTI 1.1 is a common way, it's not the only way, to know for a tool which resource you intend to display. So when it's used like that, that means each link will typically have its own uh, launch URL, which will tell uh, on launch which resource to display. And this launch URL, this is where the LTI payload, the LTI 1.1 payload is sent to. And so another link, another URL, and again, the payload goes right, the LTI 1.1 payload goes right to this endpoint. And so every link you create could have a different uh, URL and the LTI payload will go there. However, uh, with LTI Advantage, this is quite different because there is not uh, an unlimited number of links you can launch into. Actually, uh, the launch URL is never really used um, f uh, to launch into the um, tool no more. What is used is the URLs you've registered to do the OpenID flow. So that's your initiate login endpoint and you pre-registered uh, Regibank URIs. So now you're gonna ask, well, where did my launch URL went? Because that's what I need to know where, to know eventually which resource I need to launch to. And so it's actually passed now as a parameter um, uh, on those requests. And so in the, in the initiate looking, it's passed as a target link URI here. And this is passed as a parameter that so it's unsigned. So it's a piece of information you have, but that's not, you have no way to verify that it's uh, not been compromised. But still, it's a piece of information that is used in, uh, that's passed to use that you may use to decide where to route your Regibank URI. And then you, you're going to go to the tool and initiate the uh, OpenID authentication request here. And now you're going to get your ID token back to your Regibank URI. And again, the OpenID token is going to include inside the ID token. So now it's going to be signed. It's going to echo again the same target link URI. So you should verify that they're the same, really. But now you're going to have it signed into the, um, into the ID token. So from there, you can decide, you know which resource you, you need to display. You don't have to redirect to that endpoint, but you know where you're supposed to, to go uh, from that point. So that means that if you don't even redirect to the endpoint, you can keep those existing endpoint being 1-1 one, one, because you, they're never launched into directly in the context of a 1-3 uh, launch. So now let's look at the LTI payload itself. So we're moving from post parameters key value, key value, key value, key value, to an actual uh, JSON representation, which is, uh, allows us to do some nesting and some structure. Uh, so it's a little bit cleaner in that sense. Uh, also, we are able to use um, actual types and arrays. So that's a more versatile representation of the payload. Uh, outside of that, um, the data should be the same. And there are some cases in some LMSs where they had to change the data, and we'll cover that a little bit later. But in the happy past, in the common past, the data remains the same. So it's just a matter of to know where it moved. And so for everything that relates to identity, it's going to be moved to the open ID claims. And so name and all of that's pretty straightforward. The, the most important one, though, is the user ID, which is now called sub. But again, the value should be identical. So LTI enriches the ID token with a lot of LTI-specific claims, which carries all the rest of the LTI context. So the message types, information about the resource link, again, the resource link ID should be the same. And the context ID also found into the context claim should be the same also. And that's obviously a very important one because you'll be able to know which course you're launching into because the context ID did not change. And so on for the various other claims. Um, LTI 1.1, uh, in addition to the ability to launch into the, your tool, a very important feature was the ability to report a score for that interaction. And that was, that was done through basic outcomes. 
And so it was very important into the design of assignment and great services to enable a similar flow where the LTI payload contains everything you need to be able to report a grade back. So in LTI 1.1, you really re report a score for the result source ID. So the LTI payload is going to contain this result source ID, which in a way you can represent as an identifier in your gradebook for a given cell. So, and um, uh, a URL where to post that result. So this, URL, this result you're going to post into this endpoint will contain the result source ID and a score from 0 to 1, so it's a normalized score. And um, it's going to be in some kind of XML format, and you're going to get some kind of XML response. So it's not really REST, and you use your key and secret to sign all of that. So really, the key element here is that you get that in your payload, and that allows you to return a, gr a grade back, and that's going to go into that location in your gradebook. Now with LTI 1.3, it's slightly different uh, in semantic, but you'll be able to achieve the same flow. So now you don't grade the result source ID in LTI 1.3. You grade a user for a given gradebook colon. So when you think of it, it's somewhat similar, right? Uh, you have a gradebook, you have a you you have a user, and you have a, a line item. And so again, that isolates uh, this location here. So now you get the user ID through the sub claim. So a line item URL is going to be included into your assignment and grade service claim, including into your LTI payload. So that's a given endpoint. And you're going to post a score to this endpoint. You just need to make sure you add the uh, slash scores at the end. And you post a JSON score now. And it's no more a 0 to 1 value. It's points, fascist points possible. So it's a little bit more versatile. You can say 20 out of 25 or something like that. And you sign that. You no more sign that. You use an access token. So that means you can even change of model 11213 in flight because this gradebook column that exists in one, and was created during a one in a one one course during a one one interaction now you're switching your your tool to become one free so now you're no more getting this result source id and this outcome service endpoint but now you're getting the line item url which identifies this pre-existing gradebook column and the user id and now you're able to push back uh, grades here uh, at any time and keep working and interacting with this gradebook column so it can really happen even in flight. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but uh, if you are using the content item message or the membership service, then you'll find back that these services have been slightly modified and renamed into the LTI 1 free specification, but again with the same capabilities. So the content item message whoop, is now become the, the deep linking flow. And so because it's a UI flow, it's changed significantly in the sense that now it's based on the JSON web token, uh, open ID flow coming in, and the response is a signed JOT back to the tool. Uh, so the type model inside have been slightly uh, simplified, and as well as the vocabulary has been aligned with the assignment and grade services. But the same capabilities, uh, but a different flow based on JSON web token. And the same thing here for membership service. So now this is becoming names and roles service. A names and roles provisioning service. And again, no more JSON LD. So, since there is no JSON LD, then the uh, JSON representation could have uh, has been simplified a bit. Another important change in LTI Advantage is how you identify, as a tool, you identify the uh, platform or the institutions or accounts that's basically making the launch to you. So, it used to be that in LTI 1.1, you would typically, as a tool, craft a key and a secret and give that to the uh, LMS, uh, every instructor or administrator to use. And so a given key and secret here could have been used by m in multiple deployment of your tool. So for example, if the deployments were at the course level, you could have one deployment here, one deployment here, but all using the same key and secret. And you would know when you receive this LTI payload, which account uh, is talking to you. But it's quite different in LTI uh, Advantage. In LTI Advantage, it's actually the platform which is going to identify a unique deployment of your tool. And you're going to have to bind this deployment of your tool to, quote, an account or um, a consumer identifiers on your site. So it's a one-time binding to associate this deployment identifiers to an account on your site. And what is this uh, deployment identifier? It's actually made of three pieces. It's the IS ISS and client ID, which is the issuer and the client ID, which are really your OAuth uh, identifier. So it's really kind of identifying your security contract. And then in addition to that, then there is the deployment ID, the LTI deployment ID, which really identifies the LTI deployment ID. Some platforms will have a single deployment by uh, client ID. Some uh, platforms will allow a given security contract to be used across multiple deployments. 
And so in this case here, you will see that example with you is the issuer, client A is the uh, client ID, and one to, f one to four is the actual uh, LTI deployment ID. And you see now, if you deploy in this course and you deploy in this course, you get a different LTI deployment ID. So you can have to issue here on your first request, a one-time operation to bind that to the actual f uh, final account. That's why it's often preferred in LTI Advantage to avoid fine-grained uh, deployment, but prefer to deploy a tool more at the site level so that all elements in that site share the same uh, deployment identifier and therefore the binding from the site to an actual account on the tool site happens is a one-time operation that does not impact that um, course level or instructors. So now we mentioned that the um, identifiers, your user ID, your context ID, should have been translated to the sub and context ID into the uh, LTI Advantage payload. But some platforms actually had to change their model and thus identifiers, the sub is no more the same as the user ID. Well, in that case, those platforms should include an LTI 1P1 claim that are going to contain the old IDs, the IDs that have had to be changed. So for example, if a platform had to change the um, user ID, then uh, you would you would find the user ID that's going to be the old 1 1 value. Same thing if they had to change the context ID, you'll find the context ID in here. If they didn't have to change the context ID, then this would not be present. So this only contains the identifiers that had to change user ID, context ID. So this claim also contains, may also contain the uh, old consumer key. And it's really going to be quite nice because now you're going to have to get this LTI deployment coming to you, which you don't know about but it's going to tell you also which consumer key it used to be, and then you can do an automatic reassociation. Well, for this automatic reassociation to be trusted, then you just have to, it will have to be signed, and it's going to be signed with the old secret. So it's really telling you that the ones claiming to be this consumer key was also the old one one consumer. So that actually could be quite nice to avoid, uh, again, to have to prompt the user for binding, rebinding on first launch. So here we go back to this first launch, it's a new, Deployment ID, you you never seen it before. Goes to your to your tool, but it also contains your key in the LTI one P one claim, and which is signed with the old secret. And so now, because of this information, you can automatically reassociate this new LTI one free deployment to your old consumer account, which that was identified for the LTI one one consumer key. So finally the platform's really going to tell the rest of the story. So the platforms are going to tell you how you migrate your tool uh, in that given context. And they might use different strategies. Ones may use in-place update where you go to your tool configuration and there is some kind of toggle that say, okay, do you use 1.1 one one or do you use one free? And you check what you use and you put the right information and then it's easy, as easy to toggle from one place to another. Others may actually ask you to deploy a new tool uh, aside the one one tool and use domain matching mechanics to to now wire the old links to the new uh, one free tool. So, but again, that's going to be the platforms are going to tell you that and the fine details on how they implemented that. But the key point is that the specification were built in a in a way to allow a migration path from one one to one free. So on that, thank you very much. Or I would advise you to go to the actual IMS Global website. So there is actually an LTI specification around migration that contains a lot of the details that were covered in this uh, presentation. And that's it. So thank you uh, and happy migration.